Prime Minister, thank you very much for your talk. Um, you've discussed integration within Europe to a great extent. Um, how far are you willing to take that principle? For example, on the point of military integration, would you be uh, open to the idea of a more integrated European military? Uh, I understand that uh, Slovakia still uses um, Russian MiGs, for example. They would benefit greatly from updated Europe, uh, Western European technologies. Uh, on the other hand, you recently, I think, pulled out of uh, the NATO commitments in Iraq. So where would you stand on this issue? You probably know that uh, agreement has been reached uh, among four countries of Visegrad group, Slovakia, Poland, Czech Republic and Hungary, to create special battle unit of uh, Visegrad uh, group uh, countries. This is the example how we can cooperate in military uh, sphere. And uh, I wouldn't be against the uh, idea of a deeper integration in this era, not at all. Probably it will not be so expensive. And uh, for instance, now we are discussing with the Czech Republic, even the Czech Republic uh, has completely different planes, I mean uh, war planes than Slovakia, how to cooperate, uh, how to create a mechanism that would be not so expensive and would be more, more effective. So yes, I believe in a deeper integration even in this, uh, in this field. But look, allow me please to use your question to give you probably a very simple uh, explanation. Where is the red line for us as far as the deeper integration is concerned uh, in the European Union? There is a lot of discussion about sovereignty, uh, and mainly in connection with the transfer of powers from uh, national parliaments uh, to the European Parliament or to Brussels institutions. Of course, uh, you always can find people, uh, uh, very strong in theory, that uh, can open the issue whether it is good or not. But look, Slovakia is a part of Eurozone and Schengen. I think that uh, membership of Slovakia in, uh, in Eurozone as well as membership of Slovakia in Schengen uh, is also a good example how uh, the sovereignty can be touched in positive way, in positive way. So if in the future integration of the European Union will mean that some powers must be transferred from the national level to the level of the European Parliament, we will agree under the condition it will be positive for the country. What is the red line for instance for us? Red line for us is the national budget. We cannot imagine that national budgets of the European Union should be adopted uh, in the European Parliament or the European Commission. On the, uh, uh, of course, I can say at the same time that we are ready to communicate with the European Commission the content of the budget, whether tendencies and trends uh, in this budget or the proposal of budget uh, are applicable to the common European policy. There are red lines. There are, but for small countries, and that's my view, I'm a prime minister of a small country, integration and deeper integration of the European Union is the best way, is the best way. Well, uh, of course, we very much follow uh, the position of uh, uh, British government towards the European Union. We understand it, we understand, because uh, it is against bureaucracy. Uh, UK wants a more effective European Union, why not? These topics are also very interesting for us and we are ready to take part in this discussion. But uh, we will not agree with the stopping integration. European Union will not be competitive if, uh, if we are not able to introduce uh, more integration in the next one, two or three years. That's my view and uh, I am, as I have said already, in favour of military cooperation too.